Good morning, beautiful souls. Good morning, good morning, good morning. <laughs> so I have been wanting to make a video for a little while, but it seemed that every time I sat down, there was just lack of communication, I guess. There was just nothing for me to talk about specifically. And so I'd continue to be like, all right, I'll just trust this, you know, that there's really no kind of guidance here. I'm not gonna force it, I'm not gonna make it happen. Um, so just whenever the time is right for me to be a vessel of communication, I am. And so I kind of let it go. I stopped trying to make videos and I said that when I am meant to make a video, let it be so. And so I felt very, very inspired this morning when I wake up when I woke up that this morning was this morning. <coughs> Still not fully sure what I want to talk about, but I know that the main subject heading is wanting to talk about creations. I, I, um, I do know that creations is, uh, uh, is often talked about in the A Course in Miracles, but it's not that much targeted. Um, I have found in study or in understanding because creations are often shared to us as being in knowledge so therefore beyond the ego framework beyond the world and into the realm of knowledge where we know we are one with God and so I guess I have been a little bit confused as to how to share it as well because I guess I hadn't quite had the experiences necessary for me to articulate it in a way that I would understand and others would understand. Um, I just know that it's been floating in my mind and so I guess over the days, over the weeks, over the months, it has seemed to marinate this idea of what creations are and what they are for and basically how creations help us in in the restoration of God's kingdom, basically the return to heaven. Um, and so I think, you know, where I'm being almost directed right now is the recognition that um, I, I think what it was that before this, this, this could come out was me stepping out of my own way and knowing that it is okay to share and, and communicate in the avenue that has been given me to share. I've been finding that over the last four months, I want to say, the winter months, that I have been more um, hibernating in a sense, that it's just been me and Tom, we've been focused on the Universal Mediation Program, which is creations, and um, so I really, and, and our internet's been finicky, you know, um, we have our beautiful friends next door, but other than that, we don't really connect with anybody around here in form, um, except for, you know, once a month when I go back to, to the city, and so it's been really reclusive, it's been very quiet, it's been really... A, focused on listening um, to the voice for God, and then B, creating, creating together with each other and with God to bring forward the Universal Mediation Program. And so I found that I've been in this phase of seeing both of um, the key components of my life being expressed through me, and yet I haven't had the words to, to share what it was, because even in these four months, it has been a process for me of fully accepting that it's time to give these creations, that it's time to do my part, that we're no longer putting this into the future, oh, sometime you are going to do it, but you are doing it now. And so I think there was a big part of this that scared the crap out of my ego because in the creations, in the extension of God's kingdom, ego is obliterated. And so it has been trying to hold on so very hard to my attention. And I think that that's part of the reason why I've had to be a little bit more reclusive and, and a little bit more quiet in the realm of um, communication and any avenue of expression. Um, and, uh, and then it wasn't until yesterday that I saw actually on the Sparkly group on the ACIM page online um, that, that Paul had written something about a, a similar experience that he's having, um, basically saying that he's more of like a, a hermit and um, he was very kind of questioning this idea and unsure if this was trying to get away from brothers um, or really just getting away from the errors. And there's a big difference. Either I'm trying to withdraw from my brothers, which is taking me away from Christ and away from God, or I'm just withdrawing from the error, which could be very much moving into the Christ and moving into God. So it's very a personal kind of um, questioning thing that needs to go on. What am I doing? Am I engaging in my life 
and finding that I am pulling away from my brothers and sisters and wanting to do things by myself and wanting to do things separate and wanting to do things alone? Or am I temporarily pulling away from um, the, the world at large, the, the erroneous thought of this world and, and pulling away from the ego so that I can enter into introspection with the Holy Spirit, with God, that I may look upon my brothers in the world through the eyes of truth and thus be rekindled and brought back with my brothers with this vision of the holy vision of truth, the holy vision of Christ. And so there's a total difference. And I recognized yesterday that, oh my God, I'm not pulling away to separate from my brothers. I'm pulling away to, to crystallize my vision. I'm pulling away to ensure that when I share, it is it is the breath of the Holy Spirit and that it has absolutely nothing to do with this character of Brittany. And so it has been a process of whittling down what is Brittany directed, ego directed, and what is God directed. You know, what is Holy Spirit directed? And so I'm finally at the point where I recognize that, oh my God, you know, my life is a living, breathing miracle, but then ego's been wanting me to be ashamed of it and not really say anything so that I can help meet people where they are in ego land. But then just through my studies, through my listening, um, Jesus has really reminded me, especially yesterday, that you are to engage in this world and to demonstrate that you are not an ego. You are to engage in this world and demonstrate as though you are not an ego. That's my function. That's my mission here. And so I need not hide away from the light of my eternal greatness. I need to let myself be the light and shine it and give it and share it as I've done for these last years and, and not to get to the point where in my mind I see differences. Oh, I can share on the um, ACIM study group. Oh, I can share on the sparkly group. Oh, I can share on the sparkly pal talk. Oh, I can share on the YouTube videos and see everything as separate. Instead of seeing everything as separate, the Holy Spirit says, no, see it as one. You're sharing to the sonship doesn't matter what avenue of expression you choose that day that is what is calling to you and that is where you're going to express and let loose and it doesn't mean that you're choosing one avenue over the others but you're choosing the sonship and that avenue of expression being the one and so um i guess i more so needed to get out on on, on the realms of, of communication first and foremost that's what seems to be coming out right now because communication communication is um the backbone for our experience of what our creations are. So we won't know our creations um, in the kingdom until we have restored our communication with the voice for God and, and um, restored our direct communication with our Father God. And so I feel that this is where the A Course in Miracles meets every single human being on the face of the planet. Because the A Course in Miracles helps us to undo misperceptions. And those misperceptions always block communication. Like with mine, it was all doubt, no, doubt, no, doubt, no. Um, so the misperceptions block communication with our brothers first and foremost. And when we block communication with our brothers, it's blocking our communication with our father. Because the way to return to the father is through our brothers. God is in our brothers. And so if I'm going to block myself from our, my brothers, I am blocking myself from God, and therefore I am cutting off communication with God, and therefore the only voice that I'm going to be hearing is the voice of the ego. And so this is where we get to almost become inquisitive in ourselves. You know, where is it that I am separating from my brothers in, in, a, in, a, in a space of wanting to be um, secluded, wanting to do things by myself, wanting to um, take care of it myself, wanting to heal by myself, wanting to um, have the life on my shoulders by myself? What, where is it in me that I'm pulling away to do something by myself? And where is it that I'm letting myself step back so that I can heal my mind and restore perfect communication so that I can ultimately go back to my brothers with a gift. Where am I standing in, in my thought system? Where am I being at this time? And I think this inquisitive nature is so important for us to really, um, um, for us to, to remember and to be restored back to sanity. You know, that's basically what it is because if, we're, if we have miscommunication, and we're not receiving full communication and we're doubting, oh, am I hearing the Holy Spirit? Is this the Holy Spirit? Is the Holy Spirit in my mind? Oh, I don't know. Da, 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 I never hear it. If we're in this phase of doubt and uncertainty around like the Holy Spirit being our um, indwelling guide, well, then that is what needs to be cultivated first and foremost. And then we almost get to the creations after because 
our creations happen through God's will and the part that we are to play in his will um, because we are co-creators with God in each other. But that means we must be restored back to our right mind in order to bear witness to our creations. Because coming from our wrong mind, we're not going to even recognize that our creations are present or that it's even possible. Our creations will probably feel like too big of an idea to even fathom or to take a step upon because there's going to be limitless doubts in the mind. And so we can't accept our creations wholly and completely until we have restored perfect communication with, with our Father and with the voice for God. And so back to the, the idea that this is why the A Course in Miracles is so helpful, because it's a practical application of forgiveness and miracle principles. And forgiveness is ultimately the undoing of how we previously saw our brothers and the restoring of sight so that we can now look upon our brothers instead of through the eyes of attack or judgment or pain or hatred. We are now seeing it through the eyes of love and we look upon him with absolute gratitude. We, we look upon him with absolute certainty that you are reflecting to me the Christ. It doesn't matter what your body did. It doesn't matter the choices that your ego made in the past. The past is gone. You are not your body. You right here, right now, in the presence of this holy instant, you are the Christ. And as I look out to my brothers and I learn to look at the Christ in you, and I bear witness to the Christ in you, the light in you, what comes out of that, that this seeing, that literal, literal vision of the Christ in the light is the mirror for me to know that I am the Christ in the light because you can't be it without me. And I've recognized that this has been my experience, that when I was in my rock bottom and I thought I had sinned, I had had my inner experience of communication that set me on the path of being a savior. I knew that I was a savior. And as I started to help my brother and see the innocence in my brother and see the healed brother and see the light in my brother, everything that came from that light burst came back to me as a limitless gift of joy. And so this has been the constant application of the law, give as you would receive. I'm going to be a savior to you that I can save myself. I'm going to forgive you so that I can forgive myself. I'm going to love you so that I can love myself. And now the accumulation of the three years has flopped right back on my lap. And now it's like, so Brittany, all of those people that you've forgiven and you've loved and you experienced miracles with and all of the yeses that you have said to the creations and God's plan, it's time for you to receive. And I feel that that's what these last four months have been for me, a constant, deep, embedded receiving. But then through that, it's not just all of a sudden, oh, I'm in the light. It's literally like you have to go through the ego dark shit and illuminate every single cornerstone of retardation. Because it is. Ego is a retarded thought system. It is absolutely insane. And so once we go through every cornerstone of that and look at it, like I've had to look at every single aspect of my false identity that I've been holding on to. The body identity all the old patterns of binge and overeating identity. I had to look at all of it as some of it would rise for me to bear witness to. I had to look at my faulty vision of, of um, some of my last few relationships that I've been holding on to in my mind. And so all of this has been worked through with the goal of knowing, okay, I am ready. I am ready to accept my creations. I'm ready to accept my part. I'm ready to fully forgive. And as soon as you make the decision, it happens. It is a decision of the mind. It is a decision of the mind. It is a decision of the mind. And so I think this is what needs to come off most clearly today is that it is a decision of the mind that we are making here. I am going to decide either to remain in the state of insanity where I lack communication with my Father and the Holy Spirit, where I lack the recognition of my Christ and my brothers, and I remain in this place of hell and uncertainty and confusion and doubt and lack and fear Or I'm going to make the decision today for sanity, where I have complete cooperation and communion with my brothers, where I have direct and, and clear guidance from the Holy Spirit in my mind, where I have a complete relationship with Jesus in my heart, where I know that I am not alone, where I have embodied my freedom, where I feel completely at peace, where I have limitless, boundless joy, where I can listen to her direction and do as guided so that I can bring forward these creations and literally help create the new earth. 
We have a part to play in creating the new earth. This isn't just some fanciful idea that sounds great or arrogant. This is the truth as God created us to be. And this is actually leading to me, me to the lesson that truly has helped with this process of my healing. Lesson 151, I am among the ministers of God. Today we will be neither falsely humble or falsely arrogant. And so in that, we recognize our complete equality. And it is in our equality that we are able to bring forward our creations. It is only in our equality that we can bring forward our creations. For as long as I see myself as less than somebody else, as far as I see myself judging and, and being greater than somebody else, if I put any type of label on top of me, even if it's in A Course in Miracles teacher, even if it's a spiritual teacher, even if it's a whatever it is that I'm going to put on it. Any label on top of me other than the Christ, the Son of God, is inaccurate. And I'm not two things. But by being the Christ and, and being the child of God, the Son of God that I am, I'm automatically a savior. I'm automatically a spiritual teacher. I'm automatically a Course in Miracles teacher. I'm automatically a lover of the world. I'm automatically the light of the world. I'm automatically in the kingdom and in joy because of what I am in truth. But I'm no longer in my mind splitting myself between two identities. There is only one. And so this is the place with which we need to get to. I recognize that I am one with my brothers, with God, and there is no separation where we will be restored back to our creations. And so I feel that this is where I am in my life right now. I've spent the last four years restoring communication in my mind with God. I've spent the last four months allowing every forgiveness and love bomb that I've thrown out into the world come back upon me and lavish me in the grace of God. With the true popping eye opening recognition that the heaven is here. That God is true. That I am his son. And we have the power to work miracles here and change this world. Yes, it is a dream, okay? But we are all needing to wake up from this dream. And so the only way we can wake up is being a savior to our brothers. In being a savior to our brothers, we know that we are saved. In being saved, we can bring forward the creations that change this world from the world of hell and war and death and chaos and rape and murder. And we change it to that of a happy dream, which is filled with cooperation and joy, absolute communication and teamwork to help rebuild this place in a way that is, 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 that works for everyone. And so now creations come to, uh, basically what our part is here to do. So creations will come with whatever brings us joy. For me, I know that what brought me joy was making change in the school system. I went to school for five years for university to be a teacher, but it wasn't until I reflected on that on a 16-week strike that I realized that no, I, I didn't want to be in the edu educational system as it is. I wanted to change education. To the mind of ego, that's a lofty to-do. I want to change education. Um, but to the soul, it knew that that was my part. And so during that 16 weeks, when A, I realized I had no idea what I wanted to do, I didn't want to work in the schools anymore, and B, I needed an answer from a higher power, I received that answer, and that's when I started to give, when I started to serve, and when I was a savior. Here we are now, three years later, and we have received the gift to give to help transform schools and education, first and foremost. So much more to that. And actually, you can dive into the to, to looking at it if you want at www.makeshift.com, make shift with a Y. We have been working on these projects over the last three years, and when Tom and I are together and we communicate, it is effortless flow and creation and vision and seeing it and bringing it all together and knowing that it is only our Father God who can see in a whole, all-inclusive nature that is completely unbiased, completely unjudgmental, takes the human element out of it, but then introduces basically the, the technological element, which is the platform for a beautiful, nestling being such as the Holy Spirit. <laughs> and so now it has been my part to literally contact 
all of the school boards in Canada and let them know about this gift that has been given us to give the world. And we are giving this gift for free because it cannot have a price put upon it because the price has nothing to do with form or paper strips or dollar bills because we are fulfilled in the kingdom because of this gift. We are, are lavished in the abundance of God with this gift. We have been given everything because we're giving this gift. And so it doesn't need to get anything in return. This is only something that we're giving and then it will be a helpful benefit to all of humanity. And so there has been a, a kind of a pulling in my mind as well because part of my mind wants to, to well ego, ego wants this to be my identity, makeshift to be my identity. And for a while it had been with the friends that I grew up with, with my family, with those around me. It was my idea, well see, look, I don't have a job, but I am, you know, I have makeshift that I'm doing and we're working on the ump and, and everything's great. So, you know, this validates me not doing the typical, um, typical nine to five job living style that the majority of the world does. To me, this justified why I didn't do the typical route that everybody else did. But I realized that that was just a shadow. That was a veil before my eyes. That was um, basically me putting my own goal on these holy projects. And because of that separate goal of wanting to look better or wanting to be better or have that as part of my identity, it contorted my mind frame for a little while. And I was very fearful to give this gift. And I was very fearful to talk about this gift. And I didn't know how to because because it has to be shared through the Holy Spirit because it's creation. So it's a gift given from God to his son, through his son to his sons. And so that has nothing to do with ego. So when ego is trying to jump on as a backpack to this whole thing, um, it didn't really work very well. So I haven't shared much about it because I didn't know how. I, I, I found it very, very um, difficult to find the words necessary to express it because my ego would always be like, it's too big. You don't know about it. It all comes through Tom. You know, Tom's the one who types it out all day and actually does the work in the computer. You don't know anything about it. Like, you go with so insane. And so as I stopped listening to all that stuff was when I was like, whew, all right, you know, I can do this because this is the task that God has appointed to me. I can do this because A, I love communicating. B, I said that I want to be here to help the, the school boards. C, I, I said I wanted to help the whole world. B, this is an answer to my prayer. Five, this is a demonstration of what happens in joint power and in joint agreement. Six, this is a testament to the power of God. Seven, this brings all the world to heaven. Eight, oh my God, it just keeps getting bigger and better. Like there's no reason for me to deny this power, this greatness, but it's not an individual separate power of Brittany. It is a united power and joined power with my father and with my brothers. And this wouldn't have happened if Tom and I didn't come together and say there must be another, a better way. There must be a better way. You'll see if you go to the website, makeshift.com, that in there, the very first project that we started was a center for the one, you know, literally like an education center. Um, and you can read about it there or whatever, and there'll be a lot more coming forward. And then from that, we realized that we wanted to have a conflict resolution program for the center for the one. And that is when our questioning started to come forward. Well, what if there must be another way? You know, we don't want this world to have conflict. You know, and, and I know actually specifically that's the question that came forward with Helen Bill and, Helen and Bill. Helen and Bill. Um, when they were writing the A Course in Miracles, they said in their school setting, funny enough, that there must be another way, and here came A Course in Miracles, a miracle to give the world. And I feel a very, 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 very similar thing has happened with me and Tom. Mayans join, say there must be another way, we're given that way. And ever since we were, were given that way of the Universal Mediation Program, so has it become, it started whole and it started really, really, really big, and now it's been chiseled down and made more and more and more and more and more and more specific. And so we're at the time now that yes, I'm making these phone calls because it's going to be released at the end of March. We're feeling that the first week in April is going to be the release date for the UMP and it's going to be made available to all of the world. And so this is why it's like go, go, go time. And so, you know, I'm at the point now where I'm fully saying, okay, yes to my creations, but it wasn't until I said yes to forgiveness and it wasn't until I said yes to perfect communication and it wasn't until I said yes to being a savior and it wasn't until I said yes to accepting myself as saved that I was able to be um, in this place of, of co-creator. 
And so I think all of these prior four steps are necessary before we get to the fifth one. And so I think that's why we don't talk about creation as much, why, you know, the A Course in Miracles talks about it, um, but um, it, it's more so left to the experiential realm. Um, it's because we naturally are restored to being a creator with God and our brothers because that's what we are in truth. That's what we are in heaven. That's what we are for eternity. So we can never not be creators here. Um, but it's whether or not I want to be wholly and completely and entirely a perfect communicator and creator, or do I want to be part ego and part son of God, part body, part spirit, part my plan, part God's plan, part my will, part God's will. And that's that split. And the entire world is split until we're not. And so we have to see and examine our mind for where we're still split so we can hand it over to the Holy Spirit and say, Holy Spirit, I give this to you to heal my mind. Let me look at my erroneous perception with you that I may see its insanity and let it be undone with you. Our goal is creations, which is happiness, which is heaven, which is perfect peace, which is co-creation with our brothers and sisters. But we got to get through the first four levels first. We got to forgive We've got to have perfect communication. We've got to save. We've got to be a savior. And we have to accept that we are saved. And I really do feel that those are the four platforms before we get to creation. So I say that I join all of you wherever we are because these are our four steps that need to happen and have to happen and have to unfold through us before we're ready to create. So let's not jump the gun. And, and try and figure out what our creations are before we've remembered who we are wholly and completely, not split, not separate, not sometimes I'm this anger freak and sometimes I'm this holy child. No, let's eliminate the anger freak because that's not who you are, that's just what you learned. That's just a habitual pattern of the ego and of the body. That's not what you are. Forgive yourself for that so that you can then help to forgive others and, let, and look upon their innocent and sinless nature so that you in turn know that you are innocent and sinless. And so, yeah, I guess that's pretty much just wanted what wanted and needed to come out this morning, and I'm so grateful that it did. I took up a good 30 minutes of your morning this morning, and so I hope it was wholly worth it as it was for me. And I feel that I will continue to kind of come on here, and I'm feeling kind of guided in a sense to do a little bit of a meditation that has to do with everything we just talked about, moving from forgiveness to communication to saving to creation, and um, allow all of us to have a holy instant of, of, of raising to, um, to that experience together. And so I love all of you. We're all exactly where we need to be, and I'm grateful to be um, embarking on this process with all of you. I know I'm not separate. I know that um, we really are doing this together, and so I love you all, and I hold my hand and my heart and my being out to you. Um, let this be the, the year, the year that we do get to experience that the new earth is, is here, and it's, and it's possible, and we have a part to play. And um, let ourselves shine this light and, and shine this joy for all to see so that we can call everybody in this, into this circle of atonement and compassion with us and love everybody as God loves us that all of us may love and praise God together. Um, and so that's it. We're all happy in the kingdom, truthfully. And um, if we've forgotten that, we have the Holy Spirit to remind us of the truth. So as we give ourselves time to be still and listen, there will be an answer to your call. As that's the Holy Spirit's only function, to answer our call and to heal our minds and restore us back to sanity in the kingdom and our creations. So I love you, beautiful souls. Thank you for being present with me today. I hope you have a beautiful, miraculous day, and we will talk in perfect time. Mwah. I love you all. Goodbye. <laughs>